Hey there friends and welcome back to episode 4 of my CDDA tutorial series. I'm Icon and today we're going to cover vehicle basics. So what I'm trying to achieve today is that we're going to understand how to find out whether or not a car is drivable and how in general you can check out vehicles, drive them. If we get lucky, we'll find something drivable. And yeah, these things. In future episodes, we're also going to cover the construct your own car topic, but that's that's deeper. For today, we're just going to find out does the car drive or not and how to drive the car or the bike or the whatever, because what we're doing here applies to all vehicles as far as I know. So first we're pressing E for examination and you just need to aim towards that car. Any any square of it will do. So now we examine the vehicle. So this is going to be good. So let's move that cam over here because these files there are important. So what we see here is an overview about the, the vehicle in general. The top line here are the, well, the controls. You can install things, you can repair stuff in that car. There's really basically nothing you can't do with that vehicle. Want to wanna scrap some, some metal on it and create some killer spikes? Can do. Uh, I haven't tried out yet what you can do, but uh, the, the first looks there are, are really massive. But enough of that. You see that little blue square here, that's where you you aim your vision at and you'll, you'll see the total of things over here. So when you move around with the arrow keys, what changes is this. So the little blue square here gives you a readout of that, of the, the parts that are integrated into the vehicle. And, on that square and if you move around you can check out all the squares the vehicle has so we're, we're sitting here so as you see there's a seat and a seat belt and there's uh, the security system and whatnot and if we move over here there's the windshield that's depicted by these blue tiles and over here is the wheel and, and so on and so forth it's not that important i just wanted to uh, Make sure that you understand how how you can how you have to interpret this this stuff here. What's really interesting always are are three things in my opinion. First off, is the engine workable? So fuel, gasoline, use yes, so wonderful. Is there still enough um, fuel there, and are the batteries working? So vehicle tank, gasoline, yes, car battery, yes. So that means this car, in theory, can drive if there are enough wheels. Sometimes there are not, not enough wheels. So you have to check out down here, in the lower left corner, you see. That is dented, so the car has some damage. But the wheels are enough. This is the thing. Some Sometimes cars don't have enough wheels or wheels are damaged. You, need, you would need to replace them, but you can't. But check these th three things out out if everything is a yes the last thing you need to check oh sorry i forgot that controls are the controls intact because without controls you can't drive that thing so looks like we can't drive that car actually so you have to get in there and the next thing you do press c to close the doors i personally recommend you to never drive car open doors all manner of monsters can interrupt you while driving now that's where that stuff is really nasty so you press enter because i personally like to do it this way there are shortcuts for everything so basically whatever you see here can be shortcut put control vehicle and turn on the engine so we're going to try that and now let's see Oop, i need to go here and now Oops, sorry guys. So, driver's seat. Let, let's repeat that. I, I, I buffed that up a little bit. So, control vehicle, and then the engine starts up, and now we are we are in control of that car. You can see that you are in control of that car in two things. First off, you see this uh, little white square. This is the direction where the car is uh, headed. Second, you see here a, a, a speed meter, 
and you can also see it when you go into the vehicle controls menu that you can apply stop driving. So let's stop driving for a second and watch this. So this doesn't disappear, but what did disappear was that little white square. This is quite important because when you go into the control vehicle menu, sadly, um, black rat, we don't care about the black rat. Sadly, you don't uh, have a better depiction whether or not you're driving a car except for this white thing. Because now your controls have changed. Now, with the up arrow, from now on, you increase your speed. With the down arrow, you go into reverse drive. Because right now, we are not really uh, capable to drive forward. We, we should not. You can, but please don't. So... If we press the right and left arrows, as you see here now, the uh, this is me steer using the the steer the, the the driving wheel. So what we're trying to do now is set a little bit backwards and get onto the road. So I press the downward arrow now, and watch this. What has changed is I have now a target a target speed of minus six kilometers per second. So I'm driving backwards. Over here, you see the actual speed of your of your vehicle, which is zero, because right now I just told the car that I want to drive that speed. Now I need to wait a turn, pressing five on the num block. Nothing happened so far, but you see, now the car actually does drive that speed. And now we can, whoops, press the right key and as you see here, I kept pressing the right key, and now we moved the car around. So, <clears throat> it's basically, you tell the car how fast you drive, and from that moment on, once the, the speed is locked in with the arrow keys, you, you, you navigate the car. So, since we don't want to drive backwards anymore, let's press the up key, the up, up arrow again. So, you see, now I'm on neutral speed. Let's press 5 on the num block one more time. So now my car has stopped. Alright, so now we could actually drive, but let's check out the, another thing. So examine the vehicle. When you, once you're driving, you can see that down here you get a readout about how your, your fuel status is like. So right now we are not draining any gasoline and we would need to drive 55 minutes until the battery is full because you know car batteries that's how they work so let's start driving forward and my goal for today is i want to drive that car at least for now to that evac shelter and after that i'm pretty i'm pretty keen on uh, going towards belvedere okay so pressing the key the up arrow now to increase the speed to a to a keen 12 kilometers per hour pressing the 5 on the num block again so now we have that speed now I'm pressing E again for examine vehicle and now you see we're actually starting to drain that gasoline this menu always calculates your consumption in relation to your current speed the faster I go the the hard, the more gasoline I drain, basically. It's not really realistic, but whatever. So over here, in case you're interested, you see here also the top speed. This baby here could go for 180 kilometers per hour, but you know, you have to handle that speed. You've seen that in this game, you you accelerate and you decelerate, and you have to control that. So I personally like to drive more slowly than too fast. So now we're pressing five if we want to move in a straight line and now I'm moving my car with the left key over to this. I'm pressing five one more time and as you can see pressing five one more time. Sometimes you just need to steer and then wait to move into the direction that you want. Here we go. So this is at first really really confusing but i gotta say this this game has a really cool vehicle management system and as you see here there's also traffic lights please try to not hit them your car will thank you but oh so situations like these are well where you have to improvise a bit there are way too many cars for me to get past that so we're going to drive over here 
So steering there and out waiting and out steering back. And as you see here, I get quite confused myself sometimes uh, whether I should go left or right. That's why I, I drive on low speeds. I am myself by no means a really experienced driver in this game. The more you train this, the cooler stuff you can do. And yeah, but that's the basics. So now we can drive around here. And driving has several advantages. You are faster than most monsters on the road. So basically, whatever monster is after you, you can speed up this baby to really good speeds, and therefore, you are a lot safer in a car. So we can now go for 19 kilometers per hour. And as you see, the faster you go, well, let's, let's see. Oh yeah, that's a little bit of a, of a... So let's go for something like 38 kilometers. So now whenever I press 5, I go a lot more tiles per per pass turn, so it gets harder and harder to dodge stuff the faster you go, basically. I guess that's that's pretty simple to understand from this point on. So <clears throat> in game terms, your first vehicle is one of the most precious things that comes across your way. Because from that point on, your your radius of mobility has severely increased. Because, you know, the faster you are capable to to just wheeze by these monsters when whenever they form somewhere, the better. Because on, on on your own feet, you're way easier to to be uh, to be in a bad situation and, and such. All right, so we reached our destination, and now let's zoom back in. And as you see, I've even kept the switched perspective there. And well, okay, whatever. Game doesn't want me to go back. So pressing enter, control vehicle, stop driving, and now. Oh yeah, the praying mantis. Okay. So whenever your your vision shifts around a little bit too much, this this changes back once you get out of your car. Okay, so my character right now is in a good spot, but the only thing that actually really does hurt us a lot is the fact that we're running low on gasoline on that car. As you see here, there's only 0 0.8 liters left of these uh, 60 liter tank. So we're also going to talk about how to refuel your car today, you know, vehicle basics. So let's examine another car. And as you see here, this car might be gift from the heavens. I didn't uh, touch that one in the first episode because I didn't want to hop into vehicles too quickly, but this is a military cargo truck and it seems like it's perfectly drivable but let's see it fails to start so well as you can see here the engine is damaged but it should actually start at some point well we're unlucky with that one so we would need to check out what part is right now malfunctioning to get that running I'm actually pretty sure there should be a chance of that motor starting, but it's not an option unless you have enough wheel uh, and enough vehicles and mechanics skills to fix that. But we don't. So what's more important here is this uh, thing contains fuel, but sadly the wrong fuel. JP8 fuel is nothing our engine can digest. Check it out here. We need gasoline not the JP8 fuel, so that won't work. Let's check out my inventory. Do I have enough water on me? Another thing, don't travel without water. Or anything with with quench with quench qualities. So there's still that praying mantis around the corner. If you want to avoid combat, there's several thing, well, things you can do. For now, we're just cutting the corners here. You can also crouch on the floor to make sure that you make less of a no less noise and stuff. It's really cool what you can do in this game. We're going to cover up these things in later stages. So I'm now checking out if there's water anyway. You remember G. But it looks like water is not 
available at this place. Okay, we're going to continue driving with our car towards Belvedere now. That's that's my plan. Because I want to fetch something which allows me to get fuel out of other cars. Because, you know, many broken down cars in this game actually do provide fuel for you. But the thing is, you just can't uh, get it out of there that easily. So, let's see. Let's stop the car. Pressing enter and going into that menu. And let's check out that police car here. So this police car has a... Has a vehicle tank with gasoline. Actually, it seems as if we, this uh, police car is drivable too. Man, this is a lucky room so far. Ah, well. But, yep. This car would definitely, uh, be drivable too, I guess. Or is there something? Sometimes it's not that easy to check out why, why the car ain't moving anymore. And, uh, by all means, this can be quite confusing. With this car, it seems as if the, uh, controls are too broken down can't really tell it from this uh, point of, of view as well but basically if you can't control the car here from any of these uh, points when you turned on the engine and the car menu doesn't go like this and allows you to control the car directly and the steering nose doesn't appear so I'm gonna show you the difference for a moment here so here I turn on the uh, engine, but the steering icon doesn't show up, so I can't really read out what kind of what part of the car here right now is actually broken. But yeah, you get the idea why people are confused about that, and that's why this uh, episode is also just vehicle basics. We're going to cover up uh, all these things, how to how to understand these finer things about vehicles in another episode, don't you? For now, you can safely try out your cars and have a good readout with the uh, with the instructions I left at the beginning of the video. And don't you, don't be afraid, finding a drivable car sometimes really takes a while. And also, there are certain locations in the game that are more likely to have drivable cars than other than other locations. For example, that motel was already a pretty lucky location. All right, we're getting closer to the town, so I'm slowing down my car here at this point and I'm getting out of here. So now we are in the vicinity of town, and this is a massive sign of bad news. Whenever you see a wasp hive on your map, you you should actually consider this as one of the worst danger zones available. And also these uh, question marks here on the map always depict an irregularity on the map. For example, this wasp hive. Over here, it's this little field with the uh, flaky stuff, uh, with the wood ash. So whenever you see areas like these take your car drive it a little bit back down the road and go over here mark that place and press capital n for creating and editing notes and we're going to uh set up a wasp node here so i don't uh, forget that this place is dangerous I'm so afraid about wasps, because wasps are faster than you, they are highly territorial, so they will attack you when they get, when you get too close to them, and also they have a really nasty roam radius around their nest. So the road to Belvedere is actually not really accessible for us, which is a pity, because I won't be able to drive the car through that river, but uh, through that uh, forest. Sorry. But we can actually, well, drive the car a little bit further down the road here. I definitely don't want to be... Oh, I 
I rammed the small boulder. I definitely don't want to park my car too close to the wasp nest. And here seems fine. What we can do, and which is not entirely suicidal, is to go over the forests here with a respectful distance from the wasp nest. So all these episodes will never be only about one topic, as you can see here. We're now delving further and further away from the topic vehicles, but I think the basics are clear. And whenever you feel confused like I do, don't you worry. This game is full of confusing little moments, and even while I'm doing the tutorial, I, I, I stumble over things that are new to me every, every time I, I open the game. So... This is part of the game experience, that's what all I'm trying to say. CDDA is a constant learning experience most of the time. Once that stops, congratulations, you're either fit for proceeding deeper into the game, or you really, really made it. But I haven't made it yet. Still, I learned enough to guide you guys through a safe survival. So what we're doing now is I'm going through the forests, but Keep in mind, when, when stuff like that happens, you really have to respect these areas. They will mess you up badly if you don't. Okay? This can be the difference between life and death. So getting closer to this thing, we now uncover new town blobs. So this is different to the motel. And actually already a topic to a, for an entirely new episode to how to handle towns, but we're going to cover that in the next one. But we're, for today, only looking for a house to safely get into. Towns are full of zombies, and towns that are looking like this are really, really cool for, for looting, because... You see, most of the zombies are on the roads. I'm going to repeat many of that things in the next episode, but who cares? So, most of the zombies are on the road here. When you can't get access to these houses from the backside, like I do here, you have a high chance of not aggravating any zombies whatsoever. And that's really cool. Because when you don't have forests close to the town, you can't use that strategy. So we're going to look for today only for a house. I'm going to, like I said, talk about how towns work in general in the next episode. For today, we're, we're just a little bit uh, narrow-minded. So over here, the game tells me that I've spotted a SWAT zombie. Actually, I'm happy to see the SWAT zombie. But for now, we're trying to keep our distance. Whenever you try to go closer to towns, you have to really pay attention to the safe distance to the zombies. Capital V helps you with that. So whenever you see a zombie down here, capital V, and you see here a readout about how far away that enemy is to you, 45, 44 tiles, and also you can see if the enemy has that distinct red exclamation mark on him, which tells you that this dude is homing on you, but he's not. He's far enough away from us. So we got unlucky here. That first house as you can tell by that red paint is empty. Sometimes houses aren't finished yet. This is a, a occurrence that can't happen. But what do my weary eyes see? There is a fridge already in there. So we're trying to get into that house. I'm slowly and carefully moving over here. Always the the key rule is try to avoid direct approaches to the roads if you don't want to go into a big fight. Okay, we get into that thing here, and now we're moving over to the kitchen. But you see, I highly doubt that I will get out of this without a fight. So here, let's see, the zombies are closer, capital V again. So here you can switch with up and down arrows through the enemies. Okay, the object of desire here is the refrigerator. So, let's see. Do these zombies even notice me? Alright, the hammer we got is a very, very good companion. He has hammering and prying qualities. So, here goes a new 
thing in the game, the Construct Terrain menu. So accessible by the little star. So, well, we don't have a screwdriver. Okay, so we can't disassemble stuff right now. So to, what we're using this for now is only to deconstruct furniture. So we need to gather a, a screwdriver today as well. Okay, too bad. So let's get out of here and try to not aggro anything. I mean, my character is armed and I have medical accessory, uh, medical appliances, so it's okay. Don't enter a town without a weapon, medical supplies, and, well, some place to retreat to to heal up. That's my personal thing. Okay, so here we are standing right next to the next house, so I'm pressing E now, and now we can climb that fence. There we go. You just press E, and the game asks you if you want to climb that obstacle, and you yes that, and then you move over that. Just take care, it does take some time. And now we see this house is boarded up from the inside. Sometimes houses have that. Alright, so we're now looking for access to that house without, without uh, making too much noise. But that's not going to be that easy. So... <laughs> It's a rare occurrence, but sometimes houses are just like that. So we can now either smash our way in here, or we just move to the next house. For for now, I'm preferring moving to the next house until I've noticed that we've aggroed two zombies here. Too bad. If that happens, just start running away first. That's the first thing that you want to do. In towns, try to isolate your enemy away from the masses as much as possible, because, you know, they make noise, and with that noise, they attract more zombies. The further away you move, the better. So now we're, again, alone with that dude, so you all know how fighting works. We just move into the enemy, and S to smash pulp the body afterwards, too make sure the enemy doesn't rise again. The setup you have on this character, if you rebuild that on your own on game, the Eskrima in combination with the Kudgel is already a very, very deadly combo. You can kill so many zombies with that. You just will take some damage without armor at some point. And here these two zombies are, are rattling at the fence. They're not getting through there because they're dumb as hell. Okay, but, well, we can change that. At some point, they always get through the fence, but, well, they attracted another one. But, as a rule of thumb, I'm grabbed, let's break out that. As a rule of thumb, as long as it's only one zombie, and you're armed and all, you're, you're gonna be fine. You just have to run away when that happens, and I'm going to cover up certain strategies to to handle that in the in the in the respective town episode. For for now, I just want to get rid of those dudes. It's quite annoying when they do that, and sometimes you just have to help them towards you. I mean, they are zombies after all, and this zombie cop actually is a godsend. But we're uh, sadly attracting more and more zombies with the with the noise the fence attacks make. Sometimes, uh... Town fights are a little bit bizarre. So, I'm right now grabbed, but I keep whacking that dude. I'm not trying to break out, because this zombie is homing in. I have the goal now to smash this dude down before this dude arrives. Sometimes it's better to, to keep fighting instead of uh, running away. And while you're fighting zombies, always keep an eye out for the color of your limbs. If anything, if it if they turn blue, dark blue or dark red, it's time to take a break. So, oh yeah, we we are we're lucky. SWAT zombies and police zombies are and and soldier zombies are among the most desirable because they have fat loot. And the expandable baton is just like just one of those things. This guy also comes with a leather belt, but well, all of these clothing items would be need would, would be uh, we would be need need to clean them to wear them. But okay. 
For now, let's just wield that baton, drop that cudgel, and, <clears throat> and since it's an expandable baton, you need to activate it with the A menu to actually unfold it. And now we have that wonderful weapon which just deals almost double the damage of my of my cudgel. The moment your uh, your Eskrima user has access to a expandable baton, your damage is another level. So now we're just going to smash that stuff here, pressing S and getting in there, you know. So double barrel shot shotgun. Good loot, actually. Always be happy when you find that, but we have a mission still. So whenever you enter a house to base things, in the kitchen you'll always have a certain chance to find tools. Every kitchen has uh, a, certain, a certain allocation of items and most of the time there's a screwdriver around there so that's what we needed so here we go and let's finish finally what i started so you remember the construct terrain so with construct terrain you can deconstruct furniture but right now it's too dark in here so we'll have to let the light in just smash open that window so let's deconstruct the uh the refrigerator. Why a refrigerator? Because refrigerators always drop rubber hoses. A rubber hose allows you to just transfer fuel out of any tank into any into any canister that you got. Grab a plastic bottle or or even better a gallon jug or something like that and you can extract you can extract fuel. So great tell you how in a sec so now we got what we wanted out of that town and since my mission is over in the town I'm leaving most of the time it's really wiser to do that remember capital W to uh, set a route and another press and capital W to travel there I'm not canceling my auto move because of that zombie child because most likely it didn't even see me there we go. All right. So now we get over to this car here. Examine it, and it has gasoline, 4.8 liters. So when you stand there, right next to the car, it doesn't matter where, press A to activate the rubber hose. So it has the siphon action. And now we can take the gasoline from the mobile meth lab. I love it. And we're going to pour it into a container. Here goes plastic bottle. And let's do that twice. And now, as you can see, we've uh, extracted some of that. And in our inventory now, we got gasoline. Let's move over to our own car. And press E. And as you can see here, our tank is not really that happy. And now we can just... Uh, get into that menu here and press the refill, so F. And now you can select that vehicle tank, press enter, and just select the bottles with enter. And there you go, that's how you refill your car. And that's the end of our vehicle basics episode. I hope that was helpful for you. Like you, you noticed there, there are some hiccups even for me while I'm doing this tutorial. I'm sorry about that because it's sometimes a little bit wacky to find out if a car is drivable or not, but for me, trial and error was the perfect solution. Feel free to drop me a comment down below if you know what I why that police car didn't drive. I, I haven't found out. I'd be really happy to know. And yeah, any other comments, questions, whatever, drop them down there. Leave a thumbs up on that video if you enjoyed. And of course, consider subscribing to the channel. Daily videos happening there. I'd be really happy to have you there and have a nice day. Bye-bye.